President Biden exits the 2024 presidential race, endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris and shaking up the Democratic Party only weeks before the convention. And we begin our closer look at Team USA as the Paris Olympics Games are just days away. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is the Morning Rundown. Good morning. Happy Monday. Today is July 22nd. Thank you for starting your day with us. I'm Kara Rucker. Unprecedented is a word we've used a lot this election cycle, and it continues this morning. It was a historic but not shocking moment when President Joe Biden announced this weekend he will not be seeking re-election, suspending his 2024 campaign and immediately endorsing his vice president Kamala Harris. No major presidential candidate has ever dropped out of the race this close to Election Day or after all the primaries had already ended. Reaction has been swift, and there's been more support pouring in this morning for Harris to take the helm. Here's the announcement straight from the source. President Biden posting on X, it is in the best interest of the party and the country for him to stand down and focus solely on finishing the remainder of his first and only term. Harris accepted Biden's endorsement in a post on X, saying it is her intention to earn and win the nomination. There's been intense pressure leading up to Sunday's decision, with dozens of Democratic lawmakers and donors asking the president to step aside over concerns he would lose the election. Right now, President Biden is recovering from COVID, but is expected to address the nation publicly over his decision to drop out of the race later this week. There was immediate reaction from prominent people in the Democratic Party, including former President Obama, the Clintons, and major labor organizations. There was also reaction from the Republican side of the aisle, the House Speaker calling for President Biden to resign now. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi both supported Biden's decision, calling it a difficult one to make, but the right one. Then a joint statement from the Clintons, not only supporting Biden's decision to drop out, but also supporting his endorsement to replace him, throwing their support behind Vice President Kamala Harris. Former President Obama published a lengthy statement to social media following Biden's announcement, touting Biden's successes in his long political career, including his time as Obama's VP, and says the Democratic Party is now entering uncharted waters. On the Republican side, House Speaker Mike Johnson says if Biden isn't fit to run for president, he's not fit to serve as one. And the Republican nominee, former President Donald Trump, now canceling a presidential debate that was scheduled for October amid uncertainty on who will be the Democratic nominee. So what is next for the Democratic Party? It'll probably be a busy week of further endorsements and questions swirling around who would be the vice president on the Democratic ticket if Kamala is the presidential candidate. The party as a whole, after a tumultuous few weeks since debate night, seems re-energized, with reports showing the party raising nearly $50 million since Biden's announcement. While a lot of attention turns to Kamala Harris in the coming days, it won't be until the Democratic convention next month that the party secures its nominee to take on former President Trump in November. Today, lawmakers are expected to press the head of the Secret Service at a congressional hearing after the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump's life last weekend. Director Kimberly Cheadle will be asked how the Secret Service's biggest failure in four decades happened under her watch. Cheadle released a statement on Sunday in support of independent reviews of the agency's steps taken that day. The Secret Service has acknowledged there have been times it did not provide full federal resources to Trump's campaign, though it did not deny any request at the Pennsylvania rally where the shooting occurred. This comes as critics are questioning the agency's preparations and actions and calls for the director to step down are growing ahead of her testimony. 
The Israeli military says it intercepted a missile fired from Yemen early Sunday, just hours after Israel made its first strike on Yemen. The strike came after Houthi rebels launched a drone attack in Tel Aviv Friday that killed one person. Since the Israel-Hamas war began in October, the Iran-backed group has been launching strikes on Israel from Yemen. The strike on Saturday is the first time Israel is known to have responded to a Houthi attack, hitting a critical port that Israel says is how the Houthis received their weapons from Iran. Delta Airlines is struggling to get back to normal after last week's global cyber software outage. The company canceled more than a thousand flights Sunday alone after having already canceled 3,500 since Friday's CrowdStrike outage. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg has issued a warning reminding Delta it has to provide customers with adequate assistance and refunds. In his statement, Delta CEO apologized to impacted customers and said canceling flights is always their last resort. Finally this morning, we are just days away from the start of the Summer Olympics in Paris, where we'll be cheering on Team USA. But with nearly 600 athletes from the U.S. competing, it's a tall order to know every single one. So this week, we want to highlight a few of them, get to know them and their sport a little better. Today we have the story of twin sisters who are looking to make a racket on the badminton court. Here now is senior producer Brock Kohler with today's edition of Racing Toward Paris. When twins Annie and Carrie Shu were around eight years old, their parents gave them a choice. Continue practicing ice skating, which they were excelling at, or selecting another sport, one they think they would like even more. Their pick? Badminton. Uh, I can't remember exactly where it was because we were eight, but I just remember it was like the ambiance was pretty nice and like as an eight-year-old I was like, wow, this place is so cool. I feel like I, I would like this sport just because of like, you know, the place that we were in. And once they picked up that racket... We really liked it, so like there was no looking back. Now, it's time to look ahead as the twin sisters from San Jose, California embark on their first Olympic Games. As teens, they competed in junior national tournaments where they would hear from their coaches they had what it took to one day make the Olympics. But the sisters took their time, making sure they were fully prepared for the journey ahead, getting jobs to fund their goal, and getting an education, graduating from UC Berkeley while putting athletics somewhat on hold until it was time to focus on their Olympic dreams. So in 2022, after we had worked for a year and saved up a little bit of money, and with our parents' support, we decided to take that leap of faith and like just go for it because we didn't really want to have any regrets later in life. The 24-year-old twins qualifying for their first Olympic Games, feeling a mix of immense joy and relief, going in with an underdog mentality, leaving unnecessary pressure at the door, ready to expect the unexpected. Their top priority going into the Games? to have fun, and they will do so with the support of their family. The people standing behind us, so like our parents are our number one supporters, um, our family saw our mother, um, our sister, our brother-in-law, my boyfriend and his family are all going to Paris to support us and they'll be watching in the stands. So knowing that like you have people who like have supported your entire journey, like long before you even like wanted to quit Olympics, at like one of the most important moments of your career, I feel like that in itself like, would inspire us to just be fearless on court and like really go for it. Annie and Carrie say they used to watch badminton players on their TV growing up, idols that inspired them to go for their dreams. And now, these talented sisters will be the ones who will be inspiring that next generation of badminton players. I think it would mean a lot to us just because when we were growing up, yes, we had idols, but most of them were from like a different country um, where badminton was more supported. So I think for young girls like in the States and maybe even some other countries to be able to look at like um, two badminton players from the United States who really made it um, and inspire them to want to like take a journey similar to ours would mean uh, the world to us. It would be really cool if there are young girls out there who look at us and then kind of like make that a little big dream or like a little big badminton player dream theirs and then have that to strive for growing up, um, it would be like heartwarming as well. <laughs>
These are your top stories for this Monday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day. Thank you.